yip a jip. Bamboozle new canoes all pippity pop she called. You jip a jip. Bamboozle new canoes all pippity pop she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn. Good evening. Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera. You're watching Independent Thinking. Well, it's a brand new year, but the same old stories, tax increases and political theater. So we can get a bit of a preview. I thought we'd ask a couple friends here. You know this guy. Unfortunately, you know this guy. Eric Sonderman from E Squared. I've never understood what E Squared is. Really, for. we go by SE2 these days. So don't ask. It's too complicated, but SE2. All right, you keep your little private secrets. Uh, Sandra Solon, who's much smarter and much more attractive than you, works for <laughs> Capital Solutions. And okay. is it fair to say both of you are just political hacks? It's probably a fair assessment, right? I mean, right? You guys get paid for this. <laughs> That's right. I, however, am an ideologue and therefore always <laughs> correct. Let's let's get over. The, let's let's go with a big one. M Michael, who Bennett for is going to be my new new senator. And by the way, I'm pretty thrilled by this because, um, um, well, I don't know what he stands for on any issue, but but apparently the papers like him. Let's let's go over here first. This, this did this one shock you as much as it shocked me? It surprised me. I can't say I was shocked by it. I mean, I think there were three candidates in my mind. There was Hickenlooper, there was Romanoff, and then there was Wildcard. And Wildcard could have been a handful of people. Ritter decided to go with candidate number three being Wildcard and being Michael Bennett. I wrote a column in, in, in the Rocky earlier this week where I analogized this pick to when Bill Ritter became DA back in 1993 where Roy Romer eschewed the more political candidates in front of him and just went with his gut, went with the guy who blew him away in the interview and basically said, I'm governor, I'm gonna do it my way. Uh, but and I think it was Ritter doing cards. that weren't really wild cards. I, I heard a lot about Perlmutter, heard a lot about John Salazar. It seems to me Ritter's first responsibility from a partisan point of view is to get somebody who's going to win in two years, which means somebody who can campaign, somebody who can raise money, and on paper it's just a big question mark. This man's never run for a no, single I think lane. Bennett clearly can raise money. He has those connections. He is not, you know, in a couple weeks, it's not going to be Michael Bennett. It's going to be Senator Michael Bennett. And with all the power that incumbency provides. Why so do I, I don't have think a sense that all around the state there are superintendents going, you know, I might get an <laughs> ambassadorship. <laughs> Me, I, I could see the, you know, the guy from uh, Boulder going, you know, I could be on the Joy Chiefs of Staff. I think I, I could do this. You were shocked? I was surprised, yes, certainly, but I was pleased. I was very pleased. I think Bennett is a real talent, um, but I was surprised at the political decision to choose Bennett from the standpoint of his ability to be reelected. And I know Republicans certainly see it as not a real opportunity to um, take that seat back and I, get, I, I get one of, for Republicans. I know of Republicans who said, I'm staying awake nights trying to figure out how I'm going to beat Senator Hickenlooper in, in two years. Mm -hmm. That has, has vanished. I'm not saying that Republicans are cocky. Nothing beats the power of the incumbency. But on paper, Hickenlooper had the numbers. You put out the resume, the statewide name ID, he's uh, won elected office, he's won every tax increase you could possibly imagine, he raises money, and he's attractive to uh, um, uh, unaffiliated. I, I'm getting a, I'm getting I'm a sense. I'm getting a sense that there are Democrats who are saying, Ritter, what the hell are you doing to us? I actually think Bill Ritter, I mean, we've accused the guy, I mean, he's halfway through his first term now, and I know you want to talk about that as well, but we accuse the guy of being too conventional. Well, here he w made a decision that was not conventional. I think basically what Bill Ritter was saying is, I'm going to trust the politics to take care of themselves. We'll let the politics sort out. I'm going to go with my gut. I think this guy is a rare talent. I think he has the values and character that I would want, I, Bill Ritter, would want to see in Washington, D.C. I'm the governor. These are rare opportunities that come my way, and I'm just going to do it, and we'll let the politics figure themselves out. Now, the question is whether the politics will figure themselves out or not. Right. Rumor had it that Obama might have had a phone call in on this one as well. As you know, Bennett was rumored to be Secretary of Education, another huge step. Any, any word, did Obama make a, make a phone call, or, or should we say Rahm Emanuel, so that we could get it through, a, through an investigation later? I don't know, personally, but, um, but certainly I, I imagine the DNC and the Democrat National Commi or Senatorial Committee um, put a call in in some respects with regard to the choice that needed to be made, um, and ha there was a political conversation. But I think that Ritter ultimately made a decision based upon what he felt was the, the person that matched his his views. And politics aside, it, it was a bold choice. Um, and the politics bold. will have to fall. I think I'm it was a bold choice. I'm going to go risky instead of bold. 
I would say it was bold. Those two, um, those two but, words are not mutually exclusive, John. It can be bold and it can be yeah. risky. All right, let's 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 discount a few of the conspiracy theories out there. And a lot of people think, well, he's he's putting in Bennett. Bennett's going to be a placeholder for a couple of years, and then Ritter's going to run because he might have trouble becoming governor. I, that makes no people sense have, to me. I, I, some I, people have too much time on their hands to come up with <laughs> these conspiracy theories. Michael Bennett is going to run and run like heck. To, to get this as a long-term gig, not just a, a two-year gig. He, he's doing it in inverse order. Usually you campaign for the job, then you get the job. He got the job, so, now he has to campaign for it. Keep it. All right, let's talk the gossip, the fun stuff. What about the people pu uh, pushed over? And uh, Hickenlooper wanted this gig, and Bennett was his protege. He was chief of staff. Hickenlooper helped him secure the job as a DPS superintendent. So I've got a situation here where the uh, student has become the master. Yeah, the um, the folks who were lined up to take this position certainly had to have been very surprised by the pick. I think Hickenlooper, as, as um, Eric alluded to, was the obvious choice. And so I imagine, though, he's quite comfortable, and the friendship goes deeper than the uh, than the animosity that might be there. Yeah, I, 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 could, I know the Saturday you know, photo op when they did it at the Capitol. Everybody's smiling. Pat Walk is smiling. Hickenlooper is smiling. Salazar's smiling. But I'm having a feeling behind that, <laughs> Salazar's thinking, well, what was wrong with my brother? My brother was a pretty good guy. Uh, I believe, was Perlmutter there or not? I mean, Perlmutter was, was talked about. And Andrew Romanoff especially, who I think is pretty, I think it's safe to rumor, would have very much wanted that seat. Yeah. These people are, these people are hacked off. What, what, I think what, what, what are you hearing? I mean, Romanoff is in a slightly different category in my mind because he's the only one who doesn't really have a day job in the political world to go back to. Perlmutter's still a congressman, John Salazar's a congressman, Hickenlooper's mayor of Denver. Romanoff really wanted this gig. He thought this was his ticket, uh, and he figured, well, if if Ritter wants to go with young blood, I'm young blood. So I have to believe that there's a higher measure of disappointment with Andrew Romanoff than maybe even with the others. I guess I would counsel that patience is a virtue here. I mean, I think Andrew Romanoff has a chance to get away from the Capitol, get out of this political milieu for a while, go out into the nonprofit and world, go out into any other world, and still come back. Andrew has time on his side as well. But he's a, he's a political addict. He, he is a young metrosexual Norma Anderson. Well, maybe he, cannot, he cannot stay away <laughs> from politics. No, I, I completely agree. And, and Andrew is a tremendous talent on the Democrat side, and he'll find his find his home appropriately and and wait it out. He's going to have to wait it out for the next opportunity. But that means we'll he's going to have again. to get a real job. <laughs> and he will. I know he's he's very interested in the nonprofit world, and we'll we'll see him again. I'm confident of that. I but, I, I'm, but I would agree. I think he was of all the the folks who were discussed was probably most disappointed in the uh, decision. Let's switch gears a little bit. Two years into a four-year term, uh, you once said that. When you run for governor, it's not a four-year term; it's an eight-year term, and that means that you're, you're, you're almost guaranteed re-election. I can't remember. I think I thought you said that, John. No, it was too smart. You oh. must have said that. <laughs> so, although I'm hearing these whispers that Ritter is vulnerable in in, in two years, and I'm seeing. All right, tell me. I would agree. I, I think he's very vulnerable today. Why? Um, I think, as um, as Eric alluded to, I think there hasn't been much accomplished beyond the new energy economy, and there's frustration. On both on both sides of the aisle, um, and so I think there's vulnerabilities today. I think he has an opportunity to make make right what he's set forth and to um, make fulfill right. some Somebody of the, he's made wrong on something. No, not make wrong, but actually fulfill some of the promises that he, oh, the he put forth. Colorado some promise. of the Colorado promises. So there's an opportunity for him. He has time yet, but um, but today I think folks view him as vulnerable, and he is vulnerable. When 